Hey, you guys, let's make this summer tank crochet crop top. Is that what we're calling it? It's the thing that you saw in the picture and it's super cute. It's, it's not always easy to get the fit right. So you have to be really comfortable with your beginning skills so that you can kind of mess around with the size a little bit. But in this uh, project, you're gonna need to know how to slip knot, foundation chain, single crochet, single crochet into back loops. If you don't know that, I'll show that on here. And double crochet. Uh, and you're also gonna need to know how to double crochet decrease. And I will also show that when we get to that part. Uh, this is a summer sweater, so I would highly suggest using a cotton yarn or a cotton blend. In the example that I show, the brown one with the pink border that Aubrey is already wearing, that is a Lion Brand 24-7 cotton yarn, which is an amazing, awesome yarn. I highly recommend it. I'll put some links on in my um, Amazon affiliate if you're interested in looking at those. And um, I'm trying a different yarn just for something fun because I want to do a different color. So I have a new top. Um, and this is a cotton blend. It's half cotton and half acrylic, but it's also a Lion Brand ice cream cotton blend. Um, I went ahead and already did the slip stitch. You're gonna make a foundation chain of 16. So I'm just gonna kinda of zip through this beginning part. You should know how to do this, okay? If you don't know how to foundation slip knot and foundation chain, go back and watch the old videos and get really comfortable with that. So you're gonna make 16 chains in your foundation to be able, to... okay, if you hear coughing and tap dancing, that's actually my dogs. One of them is really old. Everything is okay. <laughs> That's just her coughing. All right, you're gonna make 16 foundation chains to have <laughs> 15 single crochets. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's a lot of dog activity here. You know what? You're just going to hear it because that's what happens here at my house. Okay. So now you have 16 in your foundation chain. This chain is going to be the vertical, the up and down height of the band that goes around your body, around your waist, or really like more like your torso since this is a cropped top. And you're going to make rows, rows, rows growing like this until you have a long like big, looks like a big flat piece of tape, but it's a ribbed band around the base of the sweater. And you can customize this to be any length that you need it to be for whoever is going to wear it. So I'm gonna show you the size that's going to fit Aubrey. That might not be your size. You're just gonna to have to try it on yourself or whoever's gonna be wearing it multiple times to get the right fit. And I'll talk a little bit more, more about that later. But that's what you're starting with is the band Okay, we're starting kind of going from the bottom up. So this is a long process making this band. So get ready. Now that you've made your foundation chain of 16, you're gonna single crochet 15 across, okay? So the second chain from your hook, you're gonna single crochet. Whoop. Finding this yarn to be a little bit snaggy. But once we get rolling here, you know how it's like the beginning is always a little wacky so you're going to single crochet all the way across just like normal into the foundation chain did i say this is a three and a half millimeter hook that's what this is and it's a four weight yarn good grief amy get it together all right so we got to the last chain here see there's our slip knot we're doing our last chain and now once you get to that last chain just like normal, ta-da. Really remember how you can always check too by counting, there should be 15. So here we go. There's one, that little tiny one at the end, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Always good to check your work. So we just did 15. Go ahead and turn your work. Chain one. And now you're gonna start single crocheting into the back loops, okay? So uh, if you've never done this before, super easy. It's just a regular single crochet, but instead of going through both legs of the stitch like that, you're gonna go in the middle of those legs, yeah, and only into that back loop, and you're gonna single crochet there, like that. 
and you're going to do that all the way down. So go into the back loop of the stitch, single crochet into the middle of that V, into the back loop, single crochet. I think you get the idea. Uh, and just do this all the way down. And guess what's gonna happen when you get to the end? You're gonna turn your work chain one and do it over and over and over. Single crochet into the back loops all the way down. And you're just gonna keep repeating that until you have a ribbed band that is long enough to go around where you want it on your body. Um, this will be uh, pretty repetitive. So it's something you can do while you binge watch your favorite show. Tell me in the comments below what you've been watching. And then if this video is up online for like 10 years, we can laugh at the comments of the old shows that people were binge watching. Uh, right now, I've just finished watching uh, Hacks on HBO, season two, very good. Uh, Aubrey and I are watching Russian Doll, but we're only on season one. What else? We're watching Love on the Spectrum on Netflix. Oh my God, you guys, it's the sweetest thing ever. Okay, please watch it, it's so good. I love all the families on there so much. Okay, now we just, Double, uh, single crochet into the back loops all the way down. Let's count to make sure we have them all. There's our little fiddly small one on the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, so we got to the end. And once again, we're just gonna turn our work, chain one, and start crocheting single crochet into the back loops again. And you're just gonna do this. And remember, that's the second one from the, ch the end. Okay, you're gonna do this over and over and over until your band is long enough. And eventually what you're gonna have, I'll show you on the example that's already made. You are gonna have a band that looks like oops, this. Okay, see how it's ribbed? And that gives it that nice stretch so that it's comfortable to wear. Um, and you're gonna make it so it's long enough, all these rows, until you go all the way around your body. Uh, Aubrey is like a women's size small or sometimes extra small. She's a skinny mini. So um, for her, I did uh, 124 rows, okay? That doesn't mean that that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> Even if you're a women's small, I still, like Aubrey, I still suggest trying it on you or whoever's gonna be wearing it because your yarn might stretch differently or you know, you may crochet looser than I do or whatever. There are a billion different variables as to how many rows you're gonna make. But go ahead and just keep doing this until you have a band that's long enough to fit around where you want it on your body and really do try it on, okay? Wrap it around your body and hold it. Take some deep breaths, sit down, stand up, make sure it's comfortable, and then you're allowing for that stretch because if you make it too big, the stretch on top of that is gonna make it too, too big. That makes sense, okay? So go ahead, happy ribbed band making. We'll see you back here when that's done. All right, we're back and you have made an amazing ribbed band for the bottom of your sweater. Whoa, sorry. I do not have the best camera set up here. I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, but it's gonna look something like this. And uh, I have 126 rows here. If you haven't counted your rows, like maybe you just went crazy and made all these rows and then fit it to your body or whoever's gonna wear it and you don't know how many rows, now is the time to count your rows because you do need to know the count. So count and you probably know, or if you don't know, when you make a ribbed band, it's really easy to count because each ridge and each indentation is a row. So you can just start at the end and go like one, there's a first indentation, two, first ridge, one, two, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and you can even count by twos, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and so on and so forth. You need to know how many and you need to have an even number. Um, so uh, I made 126 and you can make however many you want doesn't really matter. Just make sure it fits your body, but you do need to know how many. And once you have that done, 
take the end where your working yarn is, because you know how when you stitch you're going from right to left, fold that over, make sure there are no twists to meet the other end where you started, where your foundation chain is, and we are now going to slip stitch these ends together. This is also a really uh, great time to count and make sure you have 15 stitches on each side. Because remember, we made foundation chain of 16 for 15 stitches, and there should be 15 stitches here. I did chain one, and then we have, after the chain one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then that little weirdo one, 15, and then our foundation chain, there's our slip knot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, Because if you don't have 15 in each, you're gonna slip stitch these together and you're gonna get to the end of the row and be like, oh shit. Um, yeah, that's right. That's exactly what you're gonna say. And uh, it's happened to me many times, so don't worry. Now you're gonna start slip stitching together. So you're gonna go through the first stitch which is technically like the second one from your hook. So not the chain one, but the first one off of the hook. I mean, for second one off the hook. You're gonna go through that first stitch all the way through the two legs of the V, and then you're gonna go through the two legs of this V, yarn over, you're gonna pull through both of those stitches, and now you're gonna pull through that loop you had on your hook. Sorry, I made mine a little too tight, there we go. And you're gonna do that all the way down. So through the two legs of that V, line it up with this second stitch, two legs of that V, pull it all the way through, and through that loop, through the stitch, through the stitch, pull it through, and through that loop. So I'm having a little trouble because my yarn got a little frayed. And just keep doing this all the way down. Now, if you get to a point where you realize uh, that your stitches aren't lining up, it's okay. Shit happens. Just redo it. Take it apart. Try again. I go kind of slowly when I do this to make sure I'm lining up the stitches properly because I, many times I have not and then you get to the end and it's not even and it's really annoying and yet I go back and I do it. I'd rather go slowly and do it right. But just keep going through a stitch, line it up with the stitch on the other side, pull through both of those stitches and through that loop. So you're not making a crochet, you're just doing a slip stitch like that. And then we have one more, we got that little weirdo one at the end which I might have to wiggle, oops, geez. Wiggle around a little. Oops. Both. All right, now you've done that, you've slip stitched together. You're gonna turn it right side out so that, see how you have sort of this bulky edge now, that seam that you just made by slip stitching together, you're going to turn this so that it's right side out. That is going to be on the inside of your sweater now, just so it looks nicer. And then also, um, this is going to end up being the side of your sweater. Oops, not the back. This is going to end up being on the side, like under your arm. All right, well now you have uh, your band turned right side out. So that bulky seam is on the inside, and you have your working yarn here. There's our original slip knot tail. And you're ready to start working the body of the sweater. Fun, fun. It's going to start to look like a piece of clothing really quickly. Uh, you're going to double crochet all the way around into the tops of each row. So um, the thing that's nice about this ribbed band is you don't really have to count so much as just keep track of where you're putting them. So remember each indentation is a row and each ridge is a row. So you're gonna place a double crochet at the top of each one of those. So for instance, right there, here's the ridge. You can go right through there. Um, and you'll see like the indentation rows, it's really easy to see that hole where you can place a stitch. It's not as easy to see on the ridged rows, but there is a spot right there. So it's a little thicker. I found this to be really confusing the first time I uh, crocheted into the ends of rows, but 
how you do it, just make sure you do it consistently, that you're placing the stitch in the same hole, each one that you go down. I uh, hope that makes sense. And you're going to just put one at each row. So if you made 100 rows in your band, you're going to have 100 double crochet. I made 126, so you're going to have, I'm going to have 126 double crochet. So here's your working yarn. And what you have in the loop, the loop you have in your hook, you're going to chain three, okay? From where you stopped. One, two, three. And if you're a beginner, and I mean, even like me, I, I like to mark the top of that chain three because you are going to, um, you are going to work into that. Oh my gosh, Amy. When you make it all the way around. And sometimes I find it a little confusing to know which is the top of the chain three. So why not just mark it now? So you're gonna chain three. So that will count as your first double crochet and see how we're basically on an indentation. So now we can go right into that first ridge. So yarn over, go into your first ridge, get out of the way tail. Over two, two. So now we've done two double crochet. Now into an indentation row. Into that ridge row. And you're gonna do this all the way around the band until you get back to your chain three or your stitch marker. And I will see you when we get there and show you what to do then. And see, it's already starting to look kind of like a sweater. Pretty cool. Okay, everybody. So you made it back around to where I hope you put your stitch marker, but if you didn't, you'll just know that that's where you made that chain three. Now you're gonna slip stitch into the top of that chain three. So you double crochet it all the way around the band and it looks super cute. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that slip stitch. Well, before we do that, this is where I suggest you modify for the length of the top. You might not want a really cropped top. You might want a full length sweater where the band goes all the way down to your waist. You might want it just a little longer. You might have a super crazy long torso and you need some extra rows. This is the easiest spot to modify that length of the sweater. Uh, you can, cause we're going to now double crochet two more rounds around the band. And that's what I have in the photo that you saw uh, that Aubrey is wearing, the brown top. That's three rows, but you can add as many as you want to make it the length that you want. It won't affect when you start putting on the cups. Um, just be sure to do an odd number. And, uh, you know, so for instance, this pattern, with my hair, this pattern has three, so you might want to do five, you might want to do seven, whatever you want to do. Um, but go ahead and have fun with it and, try it out uh, on your body to see where you want it to lie. But the pattern that I have, I'm gonna do three rows around and it's gonna be fairly cropped. It will be kind of up, you know, uh, at the bottom of the rib cage. So here's where you made your chain three. And I like to just get a little tug so I know exactly where to put my hook in. You're gonna put your hook through that chain at the top, which is the third chain, you're going to yarn over, pull through one loop. Oh, am I caught on something here? Oop, let's do that again. It's a little tight. You're going to yarn over, pull through one loop, and then just straight through the loop you had on your hook, which was the end of that last double crochet. And see, now you've nicely joined that together. So now that you've done your slip stitch, Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna turn your work. So now you're gonna be working with the inside of the band facing you. And you're gonna chain three, just like you did before. One, two, three. If you'd like, you can mark, you can mark your chain so you know where you wanna go into. Uh, I mean, it's obvious when you get back here that that's where you're at because you're gonna see the chain of three. Uh, I just like to mark it because, I don't know, it just makes it easier to see where you want to put your hook into. Now you're ready to just start double crocheting back around and you're going to go like normal now into the tops of each stitch, each double crochet that you just did. And it's important to remember to turn your work so that you have a consistent pattern. 
it really makes a nice um, pattern on the body of the sweater and it gives it a little bit of a, a cool like um what's the word I'm looking for you know when things have a <laughs> I've lost my mind you guys there was a word I was looking for I've forgotten it now that's okay it'll come to me later um, but this is all you're going to do now is you're going to double crochet all the way around in the tops of each stitch and you will work your way all the way around and come back to here where you made that chain three. You're going to do the same thing, slip stitch into the top of that chain, turn your work and then double crochet around again. And that's where I'm going to stop. If you want to add more for a, a more length to your top, go for it. I'll see you back here after you've made your rows an odd number of rows. So this is row two of the double crochet. I'm gonna make three rows. See you back here in a little bit. Okay, beautiful people. Here we are, we just made our three rows or however many rows you wanted to make of the bottom of the body of the top. And we've come back around to our chain three. And now we're gonna start making the boobe part, the cups. Um, so you're gonna have to do a little math, get ready. The total stitches that you did around, which is the total number of rows and the total number of stitches you did here, you're gonna split that in half. So for me, I did 126 rows and half of that is 63. So at this point, I am going to go around halfway. So I'm, that makes sense. So I'm gonna remove this stitch marker. Uh, and uh, once I get this secured here, I'll explain to you what's going to happen. So you want to chain into the, I mean, uh, slip stitch in the top of your chain. I feel like I'm caught on a weird thing here. <clears throat> so go ahead and slip stitch into there. Ah. I'm doing it. It's happening. There we go. So there's my slip stitch. And now you're going to chain three. One, two, three, and just be where you should be where your big seam is, where you sewed everything together. So you have that sort of bulkier seam on the inside. Once again, this is gonna be not the back of your sweater. It's going to be the side of the sweater. So the cup is gonna be over here. That makes sense. And this will, this bulky seam will be under your arm. It helps me to know, like, what, orient, like, what I'm making, what part I'm making, and from what direction. So I'm going to do half of my total stitches, which for me is 63. So this is going to count as the first one, your chain three. And now I'm going to do 62 more um, double crochets into the next stitches. Okay, so we'll count this as one. And now I'm gonna just move on to the next stitch. So here we go, two, three. And you're just gonna keep double crocheting like this until you have gone halfway. So half of whatever your total stitches is. Okay, that number might be different for you. And then when you get there, Come back to the video and I'm gonna show you what to do then. All right, so now you went half of your stitches across. Uh, I should have pointed out, um, I don't know what your numbers are, but I had 126 stitches total all the way around, which gave me 63 is half of that, but then we're gonna half that again and so it's helpful to have an even number. 63 is not an even number. So I actually upped it to 64. I just went one extra here. So I went from my chain three across, I did 64, just so I would have an even number so I could split that into 32. So now you're gonna take that total number that you went across with just now, just so you can understand what is happening here with the shaping. You made this row across half of your band. So you've got this row that's higher than the back. This is going to be the back of your sweater now. And that row that you just made is the front. You're gonna split it in half and put a stitch marker in the middle. And that's where the middle of the cups is gonna be. You're gonna have a boob here and a boob there. And that thick stitch, once again, that should be on the inside 
on the side is going to be the side of your sweater that goes under your, I guess, your left arm. So, all right, so whatever even number you've done across half of your band now, split that in half and count to the middle. I did 64, so I counted to 32. Half of six, 64 is 32. And I put a stitch marker there because that's going to be the, the middle of your um, cups. So now you've done that. Turn your work. So now the back of the sweater will be facing you and you're gonna be working, you're gonna be facing the inside here and working across this way. And what you're going to do is, um, you're gonna start the cup area and you're going to uh, chain three. One, two, three. And, uh, and now you're going to double crochet two together and do that, um, just once here, if that makes sense. So you're gonna, if you don't know how to double crochet two together, this is how you do it. You're gonna yarn over, and then you're gonna go into this first stitch. And just like you're doing a normal double crochet, you're gonna pull through and then pull through two. So you have three on your hook. But now instead of yarning over and pulling through, you're gonna yarn over and go into the next stitch. You're gonna pull through and you'll have four on your hook. And then, kind of finish like you would a double crochet. Pull through two and now pull through the final three. And now you've just double crocheted two together. Cool. All right, so now after you've done that, you are going to double crochet into each stitch until you have two remaining before your stitch marker. And at that point, you're gonna double crochet two together just like we did here. So go across and just regular double crochet into the top of each stitch, just like this, just normal double crocheting across until you have, are almost your stitch marker, leave two spaces before your stitch marker and I'll meet you back there and we'll double crochet two together again. You should have stopped with two stitches before the stitch marker. So one, two, and then the third stitch left is your stitch marker. So at this point, we're gonna join these two stitches together with two double crochet together. So uh, one more time how to do that. You're gonna yarn over, go through the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and now move on to the next stitch. Yarn over, go to the next stitch, Yarn, oops, sorry, I was getting that out of the way. Yarn over, pull through, you'll have four on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the last three. And now you have joined those two together like that. And now in your last spot here where the stitch marker is, you can take it out or leave it or however you like to work, you're gonna put a regular double crochet. Uh, I'm sorry, you can probably hear my dog licking her butt in the background. <laughs> All right, so now you have what is going to be the beginning of the cup. Your first cup. Uh, at this point, what you're going to want to do is chain three. And this is going to be the pattern you're going to repeat going back and forth. You're going to chain three. One, two, three. And you are going to turn your work. And now the outside of the sweater will be facing you. And uh, you're gonna repeat this pattern. You're gonna chain three, and now you're going to, not in the chain space, but in the first stitch, you're gonna double crochet two together, just like we did before. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, you'll have four, pull through two, pull through three. See how it's starting to angle up now? And then you're going to, same thing, you're gonna go across until you get the third from the end, and you're gonna join two together, and then double crochet into the last, which is actually the top of that chain three. So you might wanna mark it, but you're gonna, for your last three stitches here, you're gonna double crochet these two together, and then a regular crochet into the top of your chain. And then you're gonna chain three, turn your work, and keep repeating that pattern. And you'll okay. see you're gonna start to make the triangle shape. So I just did chain three, double crochet two together. Now I'm just gonna double crochet across. And so this is the way that you're decreasing to make the triangle bra shape.
okay? So I'll walk you through this one more time. Um, let me just get across here and then I will show you the end. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm back to the end of this row and I've left two stitches and my chain, all right? So these two stitches, you're going to double crochet two together. So you're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull through, you'll have four, pull through two, pull through three. And now you have your chain three. And in the top of that chain three, you are going to uh, do a one regular double crochet. So I always think it's confusing, like where do I put my needle? Uh, hook rather like where to stick it in um i mean there are a few different ways you can do it i just try to always have one strand underneath and two on the top for a stronger hold so i'm just gonna go through like this and just do a regular double crochet into the top of that chain all right and you're gonna have these little um, gaps here. And actually you'll see when you put the border on it, it's actually really pretty. It, it makes a nice little design like that. So now, same thing, you're gonna chain three. One, two, three, turn your work. So now you'll be facing the inside of the sweater. And same thing, you've got your chain three and now you're gonna double crochet two together. So you're gonna skip that chain space and go into that first stitch. Start like you're doing a double crochet. I'll have two and then go into the next stitch to join two together. Pull through two, pull through three. Okay, and you'll see you have that same little uh, pattern going here and now double crochet across until you have two stitches and the chain left. And do that same thing, those two stitches, you're gonna double crochet two together, that last chain, you're gonna sing, uh, do one double crochet into the top of the chain. So just keep repeating that pattern, going back and forth. Remember to turn each time and you're gonna develop a nice pattern too with that turn. Keep repeating that until you get to the top of the triangle, you'll have uh, like three stitches, three to four stitches left. And what that is, it's gonna be the top of your strap. And once you get to that point where you just have like three stitches left, like you've done four and you have three left, um, or well, basically you're gonna to get to this point. So here's the finished one that I've already done. You're gonna to get to this point here, and then I'm gonna show you how to continue on and make the strap, okay? So go ahead and keep making your triangle all the way up, and you should see this nice pattern uh, developing because you're gonna turn it each time. And then when you have like four stitches left up here, check back in and we'll go through how to make the strap. Yeah, all right.